around the world, emerging economies are buzzing with innovation. Entrepreneurs here are reinventing systems of production and distribution, experimenting with diverse business models, turning problems into advantages, and creating more with less. What are the principles that are driving innovation in these markets? And what are its implications for the billions of people living here? This is a journey to explore emerging market innovation in all its facets. And our first stop is India. To an outsider, India looks like an entrepreneur's nightmare. A country of over a billion people driven by paradoxes, where distribution systems can be woefully inadequate. The legal system can be intimidating. Governments can often fail to deliver basic services and where poverty is a pervasive issue that refuses to go away. In such tough market conditions, innovation is perhaps inevitable if a business wants to survive. Kavi Arya teaches computer science and engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. He believes that considering the context, innovation makes a lot of sense in emerging markets. The most obvious thing that I can think of that gives rise to innovation is very, very sharp constraints of the sort that you never experience uh, in the West. Given these kind of very st strong constraints, it forces you to think differently. We are constrained in terms of resources, in terms of cost especially, and we have the constraint of uh, delivering services and products to a large number of people. So I think that these very strong constraints tend to bring out innovative solutions. You just turn this dial to tune in for the best picture and you get the best sound automatically. Traditional assumptions about innovation equate it with technological breakthroughs, with new products that are first adopted by the elites and eventually trickle down to the masses. But innovation in emerging markets is about solution-driven entrepreneurship to leverage the needs of low-income consumers. You have a limited amount of resource or money and you have a huge population to cater to. Right? So how do you spread that much resource as widely as possible without compromising the product or service that you want to push out? That means rethinking everything from products to distribution systems. It makes you think about the problem in very different ways. It, let, it forces you to, to rethink the meaning of the problem in the first place in the process of solving it. Pradeep Shah, founder of Indian credit rating agency Crystal, and Harsh Mariwala, founder member of the Marico Innovation Foundation are keen watchers of the innovations occurring in the country. Both men make a crucial point about what is driving innovation in India. The principal consideration in India has been affordability. The end product must be affordable. And that has been the principal driver for innovation, whether it is Jugad uh, incremental innovation or for wholesale new product development. The inherent characteristic of the Indian market is its sensitivity to price. Innovating to lower the price point of a product is a surefire way to success in a huge market. So there are two things, affordability and the right price point. Almost 60 to 70 percent of to today's shampoo sales in India are through Sashes Road, which is one rupee or in dollar terms, two cents. And at that level of branding and that quality, the market just took off. 
because the consumer is willing to buy. Most of the time, he was a daily wage earner, so every day he would earn something and he would not mind paying one rupee. And whenever that need to shampoo the hair was there, that person would buy the shampoo and use it. Roughly 410 million people in 2009 were uh, under the poverty line. Now, how do you reach out to those people? You have to address their concerns. They don't have money to splurge. So if you want to address those, price becomes very important. Bharti was looking at tapping all the aspirations of individuals who wanted to use telecom. And from day one, they said that, how can I offer a telephone mobile experience at one sentiment? And what they did was truly inspirational, truly innovative. What they did was they outsourced most of their key functions. And all the outsourcing was on variable basis. So what they've done is they've converted all the fixed expenses to variable. Price is definitely a winner. If you can come out with a, a functionally uh, efficient product, that means it need, meets the basic needs that the end product is supposed to meet for the consumer, but at a price which is affordable to the masses, you are assured of a ready market. And we've seen that very visible example in Ratan Tata's great aspirational vehicle, Nano. It has been an innovation to offer that kind of price point is very discontinuous. Many other car manufacturers must have taken certain cues from Tata Nano experience and incorporated some of the initiatives they've taken in, in building a car. From $2,000 cars, $69 refrigerators, and center-minute mobile calls, innovative products are delivering modern services to Indians at unheard of price points. However, Innovation in emerging economies is not driven only by affordability and price points. The dynamics of innovation here have another facet to it, something not typical in developed markets. I think the key thing in emerging markets is that innovation happens all across. What happens in, in the developed markets is most innovations are done by private organizations to, to succeed in the marketplace. In the emerging markets, this need not be the route. There will be many other innovations which may just not have any business relevance, but it has a huge social relevance. I think that is the crux. In other words, innovation in a developing economy such as India is also driven by the need to resolve pressing social challenges. Raj has often said, value for money is being complemented by value for many. Professor Rakesh Basant heads the Centre for Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship at the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. His job is to nurture and incubate innovative ideas and products, especially if they resolve social and environmental problems. An ideal combination for us is a technology-driven company which satisfied a societal need. If uh, a person comes with an innovation which solves problems around health or education or sanitation or energy, we are very keen to support them. And there is no dearth of bright ideas. This person individually, I mean, he was moving around in the villages and he found that one of the key problems is uh, to identify pregnant women who are anemic. And any invasive technology to test the hemoglobin level of the blood is very, very problematic. And he figured out an algorithm to create a device which will provide hemoglobin levels without any prick. His drive currently is to reduce the cost of production so much that every village health worker gets a, gets a piece. Uh, which would eventually mean that all pregnant women can be monitored for anemia. The Indian innovation landscape is dotted with ideas that turn society's challenges into opportunities. Back in IIT Bombay, a team of innovators is on a mission to transform delivery of education services. Dr. Deepak Pathak is the head of the Affordable Solutions Labs, one of the brains behind Akash the low-cost tablet computer that has the potential to change the way students engage with education. Akash is an innovation in affordability. The whole world laughed at us when we talked about $35 tablet. Today, we are able to get a working tablet running Android 4 with a reasonably good processor and memory for about $41, $42. 
the tablet is being made available to students at a subsidized price of $21 by the government of India. That's almost 30% lower than the lowest price tablet available in a developed market. The point is, it is not the income levels of the people that should decide who gets these tablets and who gets not. It is the need and necessity which should decide. What is less known is we have about 250 colleges, engineering colleges in the country, which have signed up in this experiment. About 10,000 teachers in these colleges have been trained to use Akash for education. And about 14,000 students from these colleges are busy as we speak on working on a contest for developing new applications and content. The list of innovations taking place in India continues. Taking a cue from Africa, Indian companies are experimenting with mobile banking, creating a virtual banking system for hundreds of thousands of villages outside the reach of the brick and mortar banking infrastructure. The whole physical exchange is gone. Our stock exchanges, our commodity exchanges are no longer physical locations. They are virtual. They are all based on the cloud and uh, brokers and uh, participants all participating through the net. The way Indians experience government is also being transformed as more and more government services are delivered through the internet. And in a demonstration of faith in India's capacity for innovation, many multinational companies today run numerous global and regional R&D facilities in India. Indians are well educated, they are well qualified and they want to try harder. The environment has led them into a belief that they have to work hard. So you combine all that and look at the kind of R&D number of global companies which have put up R&D centers in India. I think it's basically capitalizing the power of Indian mind which is well qualified and which is the right mindset. Innovation in India is today so palpable that it may seem a spontaneous phenomenon. A series of solutions bursting through in both the public and the private sectors. But innovation in India is quickly getting organized and an ecosystem being created for innovation to find its full expression. For innovation to be sustainable, it requires an environment that empowers new ideas. In India, a number of institutions have come forward to nurture and incubate innovative solutions. A poor person is perpetually worried about earning bread for the day. An ignorant person is not even aware of the opportunities available. So, the responsibility of innovation will necessarily lie with that segment of the society which has been fortunate to get education. The role of the educational institutions in this context is not only to teach youngsters about the possibilities of technological innovation, but also incorporate amongst the young students the zeal to become entrepreneurs, teach them to learn the ability to take risk, which is very low in emerging economies. Dr. Vikram Parmar is Associate Professor of Economics at Ahmedabad University. He also serves as Director of the University's Venture Studio Centre for Innovative Business Design. The Venture Studio is a place where innovative solutions are given entrepreneurial direction. A place where fresh ideas receive business design. There are some processes which are already being worked out well in US, in uh, Europe, because they've been doing it for quite some time. It's worthwhile to adapt some of those, not be ashamed of getting them here, and make it more contextualized. We are trying to figure out how do we Indianize this whole methodology of promoting innovation and entrepreneurship. We are trying to really bring in this uh, attitude of working in a team, because what we have been able to see is, even if we have been able to bring in design and engineering together, it has really changed the way they have started working on the solutions. Across the city, at the CIIE in IIM Ahmedabad, the iAccelerator program brings innovators and entrepreneurs into direct contact with each other and with their customers. We try and take innovation to the entrepreneur and entrepreneur to the innovation. Our job 
partly is to uh, not to create a situation that they lose their passion but to tone down their passion and start looking at uh, the market realities and the technological feasibility part of it and how will you scale up and those kinds of issues the enabling environment created by institutions in the country comes with an attendant rider that in the end Innovation makes the leap towards successful business venture because of entrepreneurial spirit. The true sustenance of innovation comes through entrepreneurship. And unless there are a large number of entrepreneurs who are willing to continuously do innovation, sustainability of innovation in my opinion would be difficult. The ultimate goal of the innovation ecosystem is thus to create conditions that empower ideas even crazy ones with entrepreneurial direction we want to create a space where anybody with any vague or a very stupid idea can just walk in and bounce it with us and that's the kind of encouragement environment that is really required a series of innovations supported by an ecosystem of incubating institutions The Indian innovation story is rich with promise. But what are the threats to innovation in the country? What can derail the innovation story here? And what lessons does the Indian quest with innovation hold for the world? You need systems where one doesn't have to run around for those small amounts. If I need an investment of 5000 rupees to build a small prototype to prove my case it's a nightmare for me to get the 5000 rupees the kind of bureaucracy in the paperwork they'll get me through would every step would demotivate me to become an entrepreneur we need to protect our investors from uh, abuses because the legal system does not allow for redress for the lender in an efficient manner and therefore unless the environment improves you will not see such innovation that is seen in the western world come to india I think that scaling up is very critical and that's where we end up asking us ourselves this question whether the innovation that we are supporting would end up in a situation where we can scale it up one of the problems is power we don't have power in rural areas how can a person bank uh, with a with a computer if we don't have power a lot of these innovators they don't want to be entrepreneurs they don't know what it takes to be an entrepreneur and this is the responsibility that organizations like National Innovation Council National Innovation Foundation could undertake because you need huge budgets to really uh, work on this constraints not withstanding the innovation story in india can find resonance and relevance in many other developing economies the price and affordability idea is 100% replicable and will work in all the emerging uh, economies as i said africa most of the countries there would benefit from the innovation that india has shown most of the countries in latin america would benefit some of the countries of southeast asia would benefit whatever we've done in the indian environment can be scaled up in many other emerging markets so i think that's india's contribution to the world emerging economies have long been stereotyped just as sources of cheap labor but as the case of india has shown they are increasingly being recognized as sources of disruptive innovation <music>